Hi everyone, my name is Jesse Peranto and I'm the summer student on the education team at the Canadian Light Source. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the electromagnetic spectrum, how we use it at CLS, and how it might connect to your classroom. Let's get started. First things first, let's talk about the rainbow. You know, seven colors, Roy G. Biv, comes after the rain. Okay, I'm kidding. We're not here to talk about the rainbow, but the rainbow is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is a range of radiation energies. Light, such as infrared, ultraviolet, and visible, all fit on the electromagnetic spectrum, which is why I mentioned the rainbow. Other forms of electromagnetic radiation include radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, and gamma rays. Let's explore the electromagnetic spectrum a little bit further. Here we have one of our tour posters that hangs along the mezzanine inside a Canadian light source. It's a great resource to help explain the electromagnetic spectrum, and it can be found on the CLS's website for you to use. This diagram helps to demonstrate that all of these various types of radiations on the electromagnetic spectrum travel in waves. The different types of radiation energy differ in the amount of energy and therefore wavelength. The longer the wavelength, the smaller the energy, and vice versa. Let's just zoom in a little bit closer and get a better look on the spectrum. As you can see, on the right side of the poster, we have the lowest energy radiation with the longest wavelengths, radio waves. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the highest energy radiation with the shortest wavelengths, gamma rays. These separations are not exactly fixed, especially on the higher energy side. For example, there are some X-rays that have higher energy than gamma rays, the difference between X-rays and gamma rays comes from the source, as gamma rays are primarily created via nuclear decay. Essentially, the different sections of the electromagnetic spectrum are the way that they are because of who named them, when, and why. They are all types of the same radiation, they just have different wavelengths and energies. This slide also shows what parts of the electromagnetic spectrum the Canadian light source uses. We use infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, and x-ray radiation. The sample and the scientific question determine what energy or wavelength and beam line we will be using for our experiments. As shown on the bottom of the poster, we can look at samples that range in size from atoms to people, and many things in between, like DNA, viruses, cells, and insects, to that cow that's sitting above the infrared section. So far, the largest animal that we've used at the CLS is a pig. Just to clarify, we do not put humans in the beam lines. Yet. One of the beam lines was actually designed for therapy, but this has not happened yet and it's a story for another day. For now, we just use the visible light side of the spectrum when we see the lovely colleagues that we work with. Just a quick look at some of the classroom connections that we can make using the electromagnetic spectrum. Looking from a physics standpoint, we can look at energy as a whole, radiation and what that means, waves and wavelengths, what light is, and even mirrors and lenses, depending on what beam line that we're looking at. There's also the STEM aspect, specifically the engineering side, where we can look at how the Canadian light source creates and uses this electromagnetic radiation, all the way from the electron gun to the beam line and stations. Obviously, the more specific connections will depend on what classes you're teaching and what your provincial curricula says. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit more about the electromagnetic spectrum and the CLS, but more importantly, how to use it in your classroom.